Hey there, uh, College Trigonometry, uh, back for your second video, and uh, this video is regarding work. And uh, I, I want to try to give this uh, uh, some perspective here, how we define work. Um, sometimes we define work by how tired we are. And uh, what you want to define work by is really how much gets accomplished and how much effort was put in. So that there is a relationship there. So for example, I could you know, push against this wall and exert a lot of force. I could exert, um, you know, say 200 pounds of force. And I could do it, say, for a minute. And we would say afterwards, I, I probably am actually a little bit tired. I probably actually have a little bit of lactic acid buildup in my arms and whatnot. But we would say that absolutely zero work got done. Zero work. And the reason why is that this didn't move. I wasn't able to push it at all, okay? Um, and so in order to model what work is, work is equal to the force times the distance. And so we're gonna look at a couple of very abstract and obscure examples, then we'll, we'll look at a, a real life example. You gotta start mowing your laundry soon, we'll see what that looks like here. But uh, we would say that suppose that you have a vector of i plus j, or 1, 1, that is operating on an object. And the object moves from point P, which is 0, 0, to point Q, which is 3, 4. How far has the object moved? We don't actually measure that in just one distance. What we do is we take that and measure it using a vector. So how far did it move in the horizontal direction? It moved uh, from zero to three. So three minus zero is three, and it moved from zero to four. Four minus zero is four. So this represents right here the force vector, and this represents here the distance vector. So in order to figure out the total amount of work that gets done, we perform the dot product. One times three is three, and one times four is four. So we can say seven units of work has been done or accomplished, okay? So that's, that's how we technically define work being done. Very applicable in a physics class. Uh, we'll look at another example here. Here the force vector is three, negative two. That's my force vector times my distance vector, it looks like, if you can see this, it's 0, 3 is where it starts, and it moves to negative 1, 2. So if it went from 0 to negative 1, it moved back one unit. So we go negative 1 minus 0 is negative 1. And then it moved from 3 to 2, so it moved uh, down one unit as well. 2 minus 3 is negative 1. Okay? And so it actually moved back on the individual. So we multiply this out three times, uh, this is my distance vector, three times negative one is negative three, plus negative two times negative one is two. So we say negative one units of work got done. So uh, how can negative work be accomplished? Say that your job is to roll a, a stone up a hill and the stone is actually rolling back on you. That would be negative work being accomplished on, on your part. Um, so also a uh, direction. Uh, we would say that moving to the right is positive direction. Moving to the left is negative direction. So um, sometimes it's not negative in terms that it's bad. Um, we always give that connotation that negative is always bad. And that's, that's not the sense. Negative is sometimes in mathematics and physics, it's direction. So it, it, it helps you understand a little bit of what's, uh, what's happening within the problem. Okay. And so let's look at a real life example as we consider this uh, force option here. Okay. So a lot of you are going to be headed out to your uh, uh, you know, backyards and stuff uh, not too long, and you're going to be uh, mowing the lawn. Okay. And so I'm going to do my uh, very best. No, I'm not going to do my very best. This is not my very best. I'm just drawing a lawnmower, okay? And that's not my best lawnmower. I can do much better than that, but that's what I'm going to stop with for right now, okay? And you're, you know, cutting grass, great. Good times. Okay, it's finally summer where the grass is long enough where you get to cut it, okay? 
And what we're going to do is we are going to push that a total of 80 feet just horizontally, okay? And as we push, we're putting a certain amount of, of force on the handle. In fact, the force we represent by this handle right here, we would say that that is 60 pounds of force, okay? And we'd say that, that the handle forms a 35 degree angle with the ground. 35, oh, I'll write a little bit bigger in case there's a short here. 35 degree angle with the ground. The question is how much work is being accomplished? And what we do is we set it out by saying, well, work is equal to force times distance. And the distance vector is very simple. For the distance vector, we have a horizontal component and we have a vertical component. For the horizontal component, we are just moving 80 feet. The vertical component is not moving up at all. That's the distance vector. For the force vector, again, we need to consider a vertical component to the vector, and we need to consider a horizontal component to the vector. And if you remember from uh, uh, just uh, last week, we said that if you want to know uh, the vertical component of a vector, which is B, and the horizontal component of a vector, which is A, we had formulas. A was equal to the magnitude of the vector times the cosine of theta. And B was equal to the magnitude of the vector times the sine of theta. Those were our components. So once we can find that, we can plug it right into here. So the magnitude of the vector, your force vector, is 60 times the cosine of 35 degrees. And then 60 times the sine of 35 degrees. I'm going to go ahead and grab my calculator. I turn it on, and I have 60 cosine of 35, and I've got 49.15. And then I do 60 times sine of 35, and I get 34.41. So as I compute this dot product, I take the 49.15 times 80, and I get 3,932 plus, then 34.41 times 0 is 0, so 3,932. And how we label this is, you know, you have a distance which is measured in feet, and you have a force which was measured in pounds. So we say it's foot pounds. Foot, not per, but foot times pounds. Foot pounds. Of, of work that's accomplished in that scenario. So I hope that that helps you out. Um, as I leave you in this video, I know that we talked uh, in the last video about just amount of work. Some of you guys are probably wishing that you actually had a little bit more mathematics of what you do. If that's the case, reach out to me. And I'd be happy to give you something. But I do want you to know that my original website, not the Schoology page, I'll upload it to Schoology very soon. But the original website that we always use where you guys check work and everything like that, there are four ACT practice tests for mathematics up there. Now, you don't have to sit down and do a whole ACT practice test right away. But maybe you choose to do 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, and 10. A total of 60 problems. And you check them periodically. Two of the tests have the answers. Two of the, two of the other tests not only have the answers, but they also have all the work about how to do the problems correctly. This is a great way for you to be able to prepare to do the ACT. It is your future. It's, it's um, scholarships uh, due to you and things of that nature. So I just want you to know that it's out there. If you have any ACT questions, I'm happy to help you uh, work through those ACT questions as well. So, um, you know, I check those out. I would, without a doubt, <laughs> Very common for people to come to me and say, hey, Mr. Gens, I have the ACT on Tuesday or Saturday. I was hoping you could give me uh, some practice tests. And, and the day they're asking me is Thursday. 
So we're going to go home Thursday night or Friday night and just, you know, cram for the ACT. I don't know if that's the best way to go. I know that that's sometimes the way it happens. But what I would encourage you to do is uh, there's four tests there. Maybe work through one of them and piece it together. And then try taking one on your own, just a blind shot. Just you, you set the timer for 60 minutes and you run with it. And you see what your score is. It's a, you know, it's a decent way to figure out about where you're at. And, uh, you know, it can let you know, are you sitting at a, a 21? Are you sitting at a 15? Are you sitting at a 28? Are you sitting at a 34? Because then you can start to expect what you're going to be getting for your ACT. You can actually start to think about some of the colleges you want to go to. So, um, anyway, those practice tests are there. Uh, there's a lot of you that I expect are going to get 30 or better on the math portion of the ACT. So, um, so I, I want you to, to be able to focus and practice there. Again, it is finances for you and whatnot. So thanks for being here. I miss you guys a lot. I wish I could see it every day. Have a good one.